If you want to hit your forehand with effortless power and consistency, you must learn to use your non-dominant arm effectively. Hey everyone, it's James from the OTI coaching team and today I'm coming to you with a forehand video and I want to talk a little bit more about the use of the non-dominant hand or arm throughout the preparation phase. And it's something that you see all the best players use so effectively and it results in a lot of great benefits for your forehand. So the first question is, what does it look like when they use their non-dominant arm? It's going to look something like this. From the ready position, the elbow's a little bit further out in front of the body. The non-dominant hand is on the throat of the racket, just like so. And then they'll complete the unit turn where they use the upper body and shoulders to prepare the racket, just like so. See how the arms do very little at this stage? But now at the end of the unit turn, this is where it starts to come into play. They now separate the hands. And what you'll see is the non-dominant arm is relatively straight, it's around shoulder level, but also it's parallel to the baseline, which is so important. So why is it so important? The first reason is it allows you to get a good upper body turn with the shoulders. A lot of players I've started to find have the non-dominant hand point more in front of them. And when they do this, what happens with my chest? See how it's more frontal now to the net. So now I'm not getting that separation angle between my shoulders and the hips and I miss out on potential power. So what you wanna see is something more like this. Get the non-dominant arm out, parallel to the baseline and relatively straight, just like so. Now, the second benefit to this is, when you use the non-dominant arm effectively, it now acts as a good spacer to the ball. So it allows you to create that good diagonal spacing, which is so important for getting the inside out swing path. That allows you to generate more power and also more topspin, since the racket is moving in the correct manner throughout the swing. So it's a very beneficial uh, tool to use if you use it effectively. So I'll just see that one more time from the side angle. From here, you'll turn, you'll separate and feel how the non-dominant arm is straight and parallel to what would be the baseline, just like so. So then the next question you're probably asking yourself, okay, how do I work on this? Well, the first step will always be work on it in shadow swings first. So starting from that ready position, Turn the shoulders away from the target. Keep the non-dominant hand on the throat of the racket for now. Now separate the arms and feel how the non-dominant arm is straight and parallel to the baseline, just like so. And then hold this position and just really get a good visual idea of what this looks like. And then you can do it again. From the ready position, turn, hold. One more time, turn, hold. Now the next step, you can go from the unit turn, but then start to step forward and complete the swing. So it looks something like this. From the ready position, you'll go unit turn. Now you'll separate, double check the position. Now you'll step forward, down and up and complete the swing. Watch that one more time. You'll complete the unit turn. Now you'll separate, double check the, all, all the positions, all looks good. Now step forward and complete the swing. So that's what you can do in the shadow swing. And then the next step, you can start to incorporate the ball and do some cell feeds, which will look something like this. I'll just demonstrate one or two. Now, just keep in mind in the cell feed, you'll complete the turn, you'll get to this point, but you do wanna move the non-dominant arm a little bit further in at around a 45, 40 degree angle, something approximately like that, since you wanna make sure that you're contacting the ball in front of your body. You don't wanna be contacting the ball too late. So just make sure that the arm moves a little bit into the court, so it moves something like this. And now I'll toss the ball, I'll go down and up. And hold the finish. Watch that one more time. Complete the unit turn. Adjust my arm position so it looks something like this. And down, up, and hold the finish. So yeah, that's how you can work on the use of the non-dominant arm in the shadow swing uh, and also in the cell feed. Now from here, you can slowly progress it through the progressions. And one great one is very creative. Um, Ian Meyer did a video on this on our YouTube channel, and he actually has players catch the ball with a non-dominant arm, and then he has them release it and hit the ball back. So it really gets you to engage this non-dominant arm. So you can find that on our YouTube channel. But other than that, let us know in the comments below how this uh, video helped you in any way. And I look forward to chatting with you all soon.